Talladega is going to Talladega. That's about the best way that I can sum up what we saw today in the 2023 Ag Pro 300, the Xfinity race at Talladega that lasted longer than most cup races do. Um, I'm going to let everybody file on in, and we're going to get right into this. This was, to say the least, this was a, um, I don't know. I don't know what exactly to say about it. I think it was a it was a shit show. Um, I think there was a lot of good from it. I don't think it was by far in any way the worst Talladega race ever. Uh, at the same time, though, there were things that you know kind of gave a sour taste for some. Uh, so we'll get all into it. I'm asking in the poll right now: Did you enjoy the race? And most of you did. I mean, I can say personally, outside of you know a bit of the sloppiness at the end and the wrecks. Uh, I still pretty much did enjoy the race. I'd say I enjoyed about 80% of this race, which compared to a lot of Talladega races lately has uh, been better. Uh, so the, the flip fest, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the crashes. We'll talk about all of it in a moment. Really quick, I want to thank Eric W. for five more gifted memberships. I appreciate it a lot. And thank you to RIP California for the $2 super chat. Brennan Poole, top five. Let's freaking go. We will have the finishing results up top on the uh, ticker. They are unofficial, and I will read them off. They are unofficial at the moment, uh, and I will edit them if need be. I have a tab open just in case we need to check over everything. Uh, but at the moment, the results from the race, I think, are... Let's see. There's There might be one or two things to edit on it. Uh, that's about it. I'm going to make sure that I have it ready. I don't want to read them off until we know for sure. I know the top 12 is all in place correctly. I believe they just made one edit inside the top 20, um, which that's easy for me to edit really quick. Uh, so I will get those in a moment. I just want to, again, make sure that I have it there and, you know, we're not reading the wrong results to everybody um, uh, on air. So on air production meeting for you guys. It's letting you know, all know what the deal is. I'm getting it finished up as we speak. Uh, they NASCAR just, I think just finalized the results on their website. Um, so I will have it up and it should be ready to go. All right, let's get it going. Uh, you guys have waited long enough. Let's get into this race. Thank you. It's nothing for being a member for seven months as well. I'm going to end the poll. We have over 257 votes, well over 350 watching. Be sure to lick the like button. Let's get those likes up while we're going. Uh, but let's get into it. The Ag Pro 300 2023 Xfinity race at Talladega. Uh, this race lasted three hours, one minute, and 38 seconds, not including the red flags as not added into the runtime. It was 121 laps uh, instead of the 113 scheduled laps. There were 28 lead changes among 12 leaders and 11 cautions, including a caution that ended the race. Uh, so there is that. Also, thank you, Mark Mark, for the five. My tastes must be changing, but I'd rather watch a road course race. Let's hope no one gets hurt tomorrow. Seven out of ten race. We'll talk about the crashes, all that stuff in a moment. Uh, <laughs> Four percent yes for show results. Uh, so these are, at the moment, the unofficial results that NASCAR has posted. Again, if they change, we will update them. Uh, but Jeb Burton gets the win with Creed in second. Third is Parker Kligerman. Uh, behind him, fourth, Cole Custer, Brennan Poole, fifth, uh, Beccarella, Cesar Beccarella is sixth, seventh, Parker Retzlaff after having a lot of issues early, uh, Greg Alding in eighth, ninth, Joey Gase and Josh Williams in tenth, then Ryan Ellis is in eleventh, twelfth, Brett Moffitt, CJ McLaughlin in thirteenth, fourteenth, Brandon Jones, Kyle Sieg, fifteenth, 16th is Garrett Smithley, Ryan Trek 17th, Austin Hill 18th, and 19th, Jeremy Clements. Now, the only other driver on track, because all of them were on the lead lap, the only other driver on track that was not uh, on the lead lap in that was Joe Graff Jr., eight laps down in 20th. I'll get to that super chat in a moment. 
or both of those in a moment. Uh, the rest, from 21st to 38th, all of these drivers were out of the race. And this includes 21st place Daniel Hemrick, 22nd place Ryan Sieg, Herps 23rd, Gralla in 24th, Chandler Smith 25th, Balicki 26th, 27th, Kraus, Allgaier 28th, Mayer in 29th, Barry 30th, Jeffrey Earnhardt 31st, John Hunter Nemechek 32nd, Sammy Smith in 33rd, Perkins 34th, which we hope he's okay. I haven't seen the updates yet. I know he got um, transported to a nearby hospital, uh, which is why we also changed the, the thumbnail from what it originally was. Uh, then we have Stacy in 35th, Buford 36th, Anthony Alfredo 37th, and Chase in 38th. Uh, so while we're going through Super Chats and the race uh, results, I am going to pop up the unofficial results up at the top of the screen. Again, I, I want to stress that they are still unofficial. NASCAR is probably going to be going through this for the next 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, but as we stand now, this is the finishing results of the race. Uh, so there is that to look at for now. Uh, looking at some of these super chats, you guys left Fred Dog 81. Thank you for the five. All three of the Tigers and Orioles fans are outraged that the NASCAR Talladega race delayed their uh, showing their game by almost an hour. Uh, no, no comment. I, I don't really know too much about either teams. Um, and then M Martin fan for life. Thank you for that five. Uh, still trying to figure out how Burton got the lead for the last restart, but I was happy I had money on him. Well, good for you. Good. Uh, as for that part, I, that was kind of weird, but I think they were going off scoring loops rather than the moment of caution. Uh, I think that's the, at least the, the reasoning given. Uh, I don't know whether or not that's exactly what it was, but I would assume that's probably what it was. And that's why there was the confusion. Um, but going into the race, Let's start looking into what happened in this race. So in stage one, honestly, this race looked like it was starting out as an all-time classic. Uh, there was three wide basically through the whole pack. Everybody was racing because drivers who would have been running in the front started in the back. And so they were going forward while the guys in the back were mid-pack. So nobody could really fall out of the pack. Nobody could really run away and be single file. They just went absolutely uh, nuts with it. Three wide that entire first stage for the most part. There was really not much more to say about it. It was just really, really fun. It was super speedway racing at its best. Uh, you had the higher lines taking control early. And ultimately, Justin Allgaier gets the stage win in stage one. Then you get stage two. Uh, with this one, you get, uh, you know, it restarted in lap 30. And eight laps later, you have a crash collecting Alfredo, Parker Chase, um, and Retzlaff. Uh, Kraus hit chase, and then that started the whole kind of wreck. He tried to switch lanes, didn't have the clear position to, ended up barely hooking bumpers, and that just caused the whole deal uh, to explode. Then, 10 laps after that, we had a huge hit with Dexter Stacy on the bottom of the track where there is that opening, but that would be an afterthought after Blaine Perkins would flip and have horrible, I mean, just horrible and major damage to his car. Uh, that would end stage two with a red flag. And I saw some people talking about this, and I think we can talk about it with the second flip as well. Uh, the fact that Fox would go to commercial, like, without notice. I understand why they do that. I just think the execution was off. Uh, I understand going to commercial when you don't know if a driver is okay. I actually endorse that. I just wish they would have given Adam Alexander and crew the time to say, hey, uh, while we're waiting word, we're going to go to commercial. We'll update you when we come back. That way it gives the broadcast a little time to breathe, get the information needed, and you're not pressing the issue when it comes to a possible injured driver. So again, I think what they did was fine. I think the execution of just cutting straight to commercial without any, uh, without showing anything, without telling anyone, I think that's what was off for it. Uh, again, completely support them doing that. Don't support how they did it. Uh, but that ended up stage two, which Jeb Burton did win. And you had the red flag, not because of the crash damage, but because they damaged the track and they had to repair the pavement of the track and repair the backstretch wall a little bit. Uh, so 
I have to admit, it's been a long time since I've seen track condition in that sense. Uh, red flag a race. Uh, but you know what? Smart, I, again, smart by NASCAR to do that, obviously. Uh, I'm not going to get on them for trying to keep stuff safe. Uh, now, really quick, before we go to the final stage, thank you, Jimmy, for that $5 super chat. Hi, that was a great race because there was great side-by-side -side racing and two big flips. Well, I don't know about the big flips part. I'm not crazy about cars flipping, uh, especially when you see them in person. I've never been, ever since I have saw my first flip in person, I've really been kind of turned off by them. Uh, but luckily, it seems like all drivers are okay. Again, I, I'd have to double check really quick on Lane Perkins. Maybe there is an update. I'm going to look right now. Uh, that way, if there is, we can all get it updated now. Um, let's see. Uh, so from what the updates are is that while he did get transported to a local hospital, it seems like he is okay. I don't know what the full update is yet. I, we still haven't got any really major update yet. Um, but when there is, we'll let you know. Um, and then thank you, Max, for the $2 super chat was like a gen four old, uh, gen four race of old nine out of 10 RIP Kligerman. Again, I think the racing itself was great. I, I love the racing and I agree. It did feel like gen four racing. I think the inexperienced drivers, you kind of see even back then with the gen four Bush cars, uh, that you would have similar results. Uh, again, I honestly thought it was the best Xfinity race of the year. I just think the crashes. I, I, I don't like crashes as much. Uh, a couple are okay, but it gets a little overboard. Um, I see one uh, in the chat, the rail fanner. So with what we've seen today, do you think that restrictor plate racing is dangerous? I, I mean, I think it's inherently dangerous in general. Uh, I think that NASCAR, though, if they it, NASCAR's in a bit of a predicament with it. Uh, if they want to take off the well not plates but tapered spacers the super speedway ish package of it and have them unrestricted then you have the issue of speeds and and stuff like that um there, there always is going to be this debate and this push and pull of safety at talladega daytona and now atlanta um but i mean you know it, it always is that way uh napa racing fan 927 uh can we start the no ot nascar fan club i mean I've said for a long time I'm not the craziest about overtimes, but it, it's going to stay. I think at super speedways, there should be a cap, uh, whether that's one or three, uh, whatever it might be. There should be a cap. I, I think the bigger problem today also was that <laughs> the race, the race honestly was like 20 minutes away from sunset at this point. Um, so that might have been you know, an issue too. Thank God it wasn't. They, they learned from NBC's mistake of scheduling the races way too damn late. Uh, but getting into the final stage here, lap 54, you have a restart for the final stage. Uh, and at first you think they're going to start a train at the top. Uh, yeah, that's what it looked like at first. Uh, but then he got on lap 64, Sammy Smith going into the inside wall. He got spun off the nose of Brandon Jones. Jones suffering some pretty major damage, uh, from that as well. Uh, by the way, good job mods. Uh, and from that, you get a restart a little bit later, uh, and it's and the RCR cars had stayed out under caution, and most of the the field had pitted. We all knew there was going to be more cautions. We all knew there would be, uh, and that's ultimately what happened. But they went crazy three wide racing, and then you have JRM having just a continuation of their difficult season. Uh, so with that, really quick, I want to ask you guys with this: which JRM uh, team driver? gets the first win for them this year. Uh, because I see a lot of the debate talking about them being, you know, what's wrong? They're awful, this and that. And, and yes, they have not won a race, uh, which for their standards is pretty bad. But at the same time, it's not like they haven't run well. Like they've, they've been up front Pretty much every week, they've they've not been the best team every week. Um, they haven't even been close. But it's not like they've been atrocious. They didn't turn into Rick Ware Racing or anything like that. Uh, but I want to ask you guys this question because I'm interested with it. I personally don't think it's time to 
put the alarm bells up. I mean, people forget that I believe it was 20, was it 2020 or 2021? I forget which year it was that Noah Gregson had been winless all year and then rattled off a bunch of wins. And from there, he's the Noah Gregson we know today. Um, so there's a poll right there. I'll read off these super chats. Uh, Fred Dog 81, thank you for another five. Uh, is JRM's rough showing today still a sign of teammates not clicking together like most of the season or just Dega being Dega? I think it's a bit of both. I mean, it, it's, it definitely was shown in the first race of the year that they weren't clicking by the fact that they just could not work as a team and absolutely imploded. Uh, and, and I think that's going to take some gelling. I mean, you got to remember that Noah Gregson was there for, what, three, four years? And, and they had all guy there for a while. Barry's been there, Mayor. It, I think it just takes a little bit more time. Uh, I'm not going to say they're as strong as they were last year, even in driver lineup. Uh, but I, I think that they're going to be okay. I don't think that I like if, if they're still winless, say by like Indianapolis uh, into or around Michigan or Watkins Glen or, or even Daytona. Uh, I, I then you, I think at that point you got to start ringing the alarm bells, but I don't see to do that just yet. Uh, unless they have a big downturn in overall speed, I, I'm not worried. Yeah, so Gregson had four seasons. Um, so there, there is going to be that adjustment period. And, and Brandon Jones is not the, as good a driver, in my opinion, as Noah Gregson was. I mean, Gregson was the best, along with Ty Gibbs, driver last year. So... Uh, and then you got uh, Syed for two. Uh, I no longer am a fan of super speedway racing after this race. I mean, I'm not going to let this race ruin super speedway racing for me. I think it's just the the mindless crashes at the end is what leaves that sour taste in your mouth. Um, at least that does for me. I, I personally, I still like super speedway racing. Maybe not as much as when Junior was out there because I don't have that vested interest in one of the best super speedway drivers ever being out there. Uh, but I, I don't, I, I wouldn't let one race completely ruin it unless it's been going that way for a while. Uh, but looking... Uh, through the rest of the race here with 35 to go, they get to a restart and they don't go what three laps before John Hunter Nemechek crashes. Now at first I thought it was cause he threw the block and him and, um, uh, and Ryan Truex, I believe it was had, had locked bumpers, but when they showed the drone replay of it, there was no contact between the 20 and the 19. It might've just been air and just an over aggressive turn up. Uh, but that ultimately ended the race for the 20. You have a restart with 25 laps left, and this is where you have uh, the Josh Berry spin. Uh, with fifth, you know, another five laps, restart, big crash, takes out all the JRM cars uh, with 11 laps left. Then you get the six to go, and there's another restart, and you get to the biggest crash we've seen at Talladega in a good while. Ninth yellow flag, second red flag of the day. A flip from Hemrick, the destruction of the uh, uh, of the turn four camera, and if I counted correctly, uh, which I probably didn't because I couldn't get everybody, but there was at least thirteen cars caught up in that. Uh, that that's what I could at least see, and and this is what took out a big chunk of the field at this point. Got a lot of damage to other drivers that were left out there. Uh, Austin Hill, you know, basically crab walking it in the complete wrong way to skew it. Um, but ultimately like ending his race and you go to overtime. Now, overtime one, it was Creed and Burton on the front row, just like in the second overtime, which ended the race. Uh, but you have a caution come out this because of Austin Hill having debris come off his car. Now NASCAR said they were going to pull Hill off the track after that, but Based on the finishing results, Hill was a lead lap car. Uh, yeah, he was still on the track at the end of that race. So I I don't know what NASCAR was doing of 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 leaving him out there just because that car was definitely not, in my opinion, safe to be out there. Um, but ultimately, after that caution due to debris, which ended up being the last caution before the finish of the race. Uh, it didn't cause any more trouble, so I guess that's good in and of itself. Um, but then you get the finish. Burton and Creed on the front row again. Burton gets out there, ends up getting the win. It ends under caution, but Burton was going to get the win no matter what, and you have a race. 
Uh, I'm going to end the poll here. 50% of you say Barry, 35% say Allgaier, uh, 11 Mayer, and 4 Jones for who gets the first win for JRM this year. Uh, looking at, I, I see I've tagged here uh, from Cadillac John. Uh, Herbst looked genuinely upset, like he'd seen a ghost when he was being interviewed. Poor kid. I feel really bad for him today. I mean, here's the thing about Herbst. He has been the most improved driver, in my opinion, in any of the top three series. Uh, compared to how he was racing the two years before, which was honestly pretty bad, I'd say, um, I... I, I, he's been really, really good. Uh, the, the amount of improvement year to year honestly has surprised me a lot. And I can't wait to see if, uh, what the, uh, what the improvement is from, from here on out. Uh, but man, Talladega, I mean, I'm just I'm out of breath. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm worn out and I'm just watching it. I can't imagine being a driver in that. I don't blame drivers for being upset with it. I, I don't blame them at all. Uh, just cause you you spend most of the day out there running pretty damn well and that happens uh i guess uh, i see this one comment saying uh, the worst best race of the season that's kind of probably how it would be cuz i honestly i loved the racing itself the racing was awesome uh 3 4 wide a lot of the time great runs nobody really dominated this race i don't know what at the end the laps led ended up being uh but at one point, they showed the laps led, and like, I think five or six drivers had between 10 and 14 laps led. So it was very evenly dispersed among the field of the leaders. Uh, but yeah, it does give you that, that sour taste. I, and I don't know really what the fix is. You know, if, if, if you're talking about the speeds and stuff like that, I feel like you'd have to slow them down to almost a boring pace. I don't think slowing them down is honestly the option. I think it's just inexperienced drivers, a lot of them, uh, and desperate drivers. I mean, they, they said it out there. Only one driver, Jeb Burton, in that field had won at Talladega before. Uh, at least that's what Fox was saying. So I, I can't blame the drivers for being desperate. It's both what this kind of racing and also the system uh, promotes is that kind of desperation. I can't blame you know I can't blame them also for the inexperience a lot do have, uh, I, but at the same time some of them had some pretty dumb runs. I'm not saying that that I didn't think they were dumb. Um, I see Spencer saying we were so close to seeing Sieg supremacy on on full display. Yeah, I have to also admit that I was kind of hoping that that we got a, a Ryan Sieg W out of this. Uh, but letting you guys know really quick before we keep going and talk a bit about tomorrow, we will be doing a post race stream. Uh, tomorrow after Talladega for the cup race. Uh, NASCAR Weekly Podcast is live on my channel at 8 p.m. Eastern time this Wednesday. And keep an eye out this Wednesday, I believe, before that and then including that. But also on Eric's channel, we have a pretty big announcement amongst the podcast guys, so I think you'll like it. Uh, and then you know we'll have a full weekend of coverage of, of Dover as well as Tuesday night after that, May 2nd, and our cup series uh, at Bristol. So a lot of good stuff, a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, but let's kind of look at it, uh, look at what people, or not people, but uh, what the outlook is for tomorrow. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Denny Hamlin that got the poll, right? I want to double check. Uh, yep, so Denny Hamlin gets the poll, which people should be worried because, you know, Denny Hamlin, in my opinion, is one of, if not the best, super speedway driver uh, in in the Cup Series in the modern day. Uh, so he will definitely. Oh yeah, Norm Benning fan page. We'll be we'll be buying a a charter, definitely, definitely. Um, but I will say that with Denny up there and and how fast he can be at these tracks, I. Um, as a like, as if I were a Denny fan, I would be really excited for tomorrow. Uh, I think that he's gonna probably have a pretty good run. He's gonna, he might be the guy to beat tomorrow. Um, but who are we looking at in the chat? Who do you think is gonna be fast? I'm seeing people talk about uh, Almarola. I see some Denny love. I see Elliot in there. Uh, are we still looking at Keselowski like we did in the chat the other day, or? Oh. Um. Let's see. 
the pole at super speedways doesn't mean much honestly uh what kind of pole like just a pole in general or <laughs> uh cars going fast is never boring cars crashing fast isn't either just got to remember there there are people inside both yeah uh so let's see others are saying eric jones maybe for tomorrow chastain lajoy gibbs ty dylan I, i'm not surprised to see who put ty dylan dylan so pretty much everybody i mean that that's pretty much what i expected everybody has a shot but i would say if i were looking at people or teams that i thought would be fast and contend for the win tomorrow i think a lot of them a lot of time i would talk about uh rfk i think rcr after what they showed at daytona uh Enski. you know a lot of the people we're used to seeing i think mcdowell i you know, I'm not even saying this being biased. McDowell, Hamlin. I, I'm interested to see what Hendrick Motorsports does because Hendrick has seemed kind of off so far this season with super speedways. Uh, so I'm I'm going to be interested to see what guys like Elliott and Byron do in this race. Uh, are they going to run kind of like they did at Daytona and be almost irrelevant before something happens? Or are they going to kind of run how they are usually running at these tracks? So there's going to be a lot to look at, I think, with this race than meets the eye for a normal super speedway. But whatever happens, we will be here tomorrow afternoon after the race. Uh, and uh, also, I believe Darian, aka Black Flags Matter, if you want to follow someone at the track, he will be at the track with coverage during the race and some good interviews, stuff like that. Uh, but with that, I think we got everything covered. Uh, I think we should, uh, I think we're, we're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow. Uh, no matter what happens, like I said, we'll be here. Uh, but that's going to cover it for the stream tonight. I, uh, I did have fun. Even if there was a little bad taste in my mouth, I did have fun with the good racing today. And I, I, I want to make that clear. I'm genuinely, uh, genuinely and generally positive about today. Um, but yeah, I think that about covers it. So, you know, unless... Let me double check. Yeah, I, was, I think we're all good on all ends. Be sure to subscribe if you're new. We do this all the time, and, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and tune in tomorrow. Uh, but until next time, y'all have a good night, and have a good one. Later.